wonder when they're going to announce all the teams for the women's tag title tournament. Hi, hey, hello. Welcome to Market Down Production. My name is Billy Joe Armstrong, and I'm here to tell you about Monday Night Raw. Fast forwarded through it because as, as you know, and as I know, unfortunately, it draws three hours, and that's a lot. But anyway, here's what happened. Here's the long view of what happened. So Matthew Quiz comes out, and he looks all happy doing his normal entrance, but then when he gets in the ring, He's, he's all sad. He's like, am I just paranoid or am I just stoned, you know? And he's upset because him and Randy lost the tag titles to the Usos. And he's like talking about how Randy isn't there because Randy's back is all messed up and it's, you know, he's in bad shape, blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, the dude's just spending time with his family, probably, probably smoking some weed. Randy and his family smoking some weed, you know? Uh, but... Riddle vows vengeance on the bloodline. He he calls Roman a piece of garbage, a piece of trash, just anything to not say piece of shit. Am I right? But they're gonna fit. He is gonna team with the Street Prophets, who I I guess are just face again now. I feel like they were turning heel, but then they keep doing that where like they they beat up Babyface RK Bro, but then they're teaming with Babyface the next anyway. Uh, so yeah, he vows vengeance on the Usos cut a promo on the trial and they're like oh blah 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 and then Jay and Henny Uso make their way to the ring with their tag partner Sami Zayn who's just dancing to the Uso's music he's he is great you know I'm gonna be honest with you the ball line's been really whack since like last Wrestlemania but Sami Zayn has injected some life into that or I think he's just the best part of Smackdown I don't know, he's like the only part I really keep tabs on anymore is SmackDown, but I'm saying that with some degree of confidence, honestly. Anyway, they have a six-man tag, and Riddle is angry the whole time, he wants to get his hands on the Usos, and eventually the Usos abandon Sammy, and Riddle picks up the win, and maybe we're going to get Riddle versus Roman, and that's cool. I'm not going to watch SmackDown, but that's a cool program. I'm, I'm for that, giving Riddle a little push. Then you have Randy come back and face him after, that's... that's it's suitable. It's just uh, a couple tag guys challenging for the single titles, though, so. I don't know. Maybe Randy walked out. We don't know. Randy. Babyface Bobby Lashley challenges old man manager MVP to a match with stakes where the winner picks a stipulation for the Hell in a Cell match. Ooh, and then uh, Becky No Friends was backstage with Adam Pierce, like, oh, oh, Adam, friend, a friend, Adam, will you be my friend, Adam, friend, ooh, friend, friend. Uh, and they're gonna, it's gonna have a match with. Asuka, because, you know, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff. Uh, and if she wins, it's going to be a triple threat between her and her friends, Asuka and Bianca Belair. Ooh, friendship. Uh, welcome to the Purple Parade. Out comes Judgment Day. Why isn't Rhea just called the Brutalizer instead of the Eradicator or Eviscerator or whatever Kane adjacent nonsense they're using to describe her? Uh, right? It just, I feel like it's right, right there. But whatever. They cut a promo and Damien Priest is like, everyone needs to rise up. And he's like, because teenagers scare the living shit out of me. And then he cuts a promo and then Rhea's like, I'm not okay, you know, uh, and live, fuck off, but also join the group, but fuck off. Uh, and then Edge cuts a promo and he's like, what's the worst that I can say? Things are better if I stay. So long and good night. So long and good night. Um, and then he just does more fucking local, or not, not local, I'm telling you, but just you people you fucking people. 
definitely take on Liv and AJ Styles. Finn Balor is not there. The scoops already falling apart at the seams. Oh my god. Anyway, the heels win because Liv goes to hit her finisher and Edge just holds on to Rhea on the ropes so she doesn't go down for it. And somehow that knocks Liv unconscious and Rhea just pins her easily and not like a roll up, just folds her up, pins her. Liv doesn't really move much. Uh, I don't understand how that finished the match. Just hit your finisher, right? It's right there. It's like an extra second. And like, you know, they did beat him up after the match and then she hit her finisher then, but like, just hit it twice. That's literally what you did last week. You locked in submissions, you tapped. After the match, you locked in sem semantics here, but still, like, what, right? I don't normally give a lot of props to The Miz, but uh, he did a fantastic impersonation of AEW fans in his backstage promo because he was like, yo, I'm sick of Cody Rose. And we're like, yep, yeah, we said the same thing, but we're still mad he left. And he was like, yeah, he's like, I don't trust that American idiot. Are you kidding me? He has a neck tattoo. Him. You know what, Miz? When you're right, you're right. He's going to take on Cody later in the show, so repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, but yeah, what are you going to do? Veer didn't beat up King, so that was pointless. And then after that, uh, the, the Mysterio saved the old pervert. But uh, after that, Alexa Bliss took on her former tag partner, Nikki, almost a superhero. And, you know, she just beat her. That's like one half of your future women's tag team champions right there. You're just going to beat her like that. Way to make her look strong going into a tournament against... I'm tired, holy shit. So then uh, Codith of the Vrodith took on the Miz. Cody got an entrance. I don't, I don't think Miz did. Anyway, beat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff. But like this match ended in a DQ when Seth pushed Cody off the top rope, which is also a repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff moment because they've had that exact same DQ before or so. And at least that exact same shove, so whatever. He had Cody with his own belt, which he took from a child that Cody gave it to. And then Cody cut a promo, blah, blah, blah. I don't care, I'm tired. So then uh, Zeke took on Gable in another repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff moment, but this time Kevin Owens wasn't on commentary, he was just sitting next to commentary and as funny as he was yelling to the commentary with no mic, uh, this was the weakest Zeke of the story since WrestleMania, so that's pretty Im impressive, you know, like, but Zeke and Cody, they're not so different, man, they're both over as hell, uh, they're both feuding with the same people since WrestleMania. Cody's only faced like three different people since Mania, and Ezekiel has pretty much also only faced three people since WrestleMania. So, you know, I'm saying they're like they're like neck and neck. Uh, and then MVP beat Bobby. I forgot that match was happening. Um, it was via countout. Don't care. Don't care what the steps gonna be. I don't think they said it yet, but I don't care. Um, also, during uh, the match, Corey was giving Byron a hard time or something, and Kevin Owens ch chimed in, and then Corey was just like, "Hey man, don't don't kill the messenger. You sound like Twitter." And then during Becky's entrance, when um, I, I don't know who the ring announcer's name is, but he was like, he interrupted Corey inadvertently, and he was like, "That's it. I'm." I'm complaining, I'm boycotting this place, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, jabs. Or in Sasha's case, jabs. So Asuka and Becky Lynch both walk out and 
you we have a match and it's another good match good follow-up from last week i get both matches i wish were just one long match as opposed to two decent length match like the first one was like nine minutes this one was like 12 but i'd rather them sell like 20 minute pay-per-view banger you know uh oh, i can't believe i said banger and mash god damn it anyway uh fun match uh bianca's watching uh ringside and the finish i actually kind of liked it was a little a little quirky uh oscar hit her like pop-up knee where she pops the person up in the knees and in the face and Becky stumbled back and landed on Bianca's lap. It like just stays on her lap, like, you know? Like she felt like she was pulling a bit there. And then Asuka went for the kick, Becky falls off, and then she kicks Bianca, and Becky gets uh, the distraction, gets Asuka back in the ring, rolls her up, and it's a triple threat, which is where the match was always going. So why did last week happen? Why did Asuka beat Becky last week? Well, that's because they didn't have the six-pack challenge they wanted to have. But apparently, like, that's the... I don't get it. I don't get it. It felt always felt like it was going to be a triple threat. And now we're here, and we've taken the weirdest, most complicated road to get the here. I don't understand. The only thing I really do know is that when we get to 100 subscribers, James is going to rap, and it's going to be amazing. I promise you. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. But yeah, I don't understand. How are we going to have Naomi vs. Bianca and then Sasha vs. Ronda when it was always pointing towards a triple threat? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Just just walk out. Let's walk out of this fucking episode, all right? Like the video, subscribe, whatever. I'll be honest with you. I'm not as funny as Danny.